back in the day, back in the glory days, um, I was training at, uh, with, with Kenny at the time, but at Saints. And we, uh, this guy come down from London called Lola. Um, he was down here studying, I think, but he was like an MMA guy, old school MMA guy, proper athlete. Um, you know, used to be a little VTs and little Valley Tudor shorts. Um, and he had a fight coming up. So it was a local show up in Exeter called Strength and Honor. And he had this fight coming up. So we were helping him train a little bit. And we said, are you fighting? And he was like, oh, I don't know. It's this Kung Fu guy. And we were like, okay, interesting. I mean, it was going back probably 15 years ago. So, you know, why yeah. not? And we said, all right, what's his deal? And he was like, well, apparently he's designed this new system of Kung Fu. It's like nine systems Kung Fu. And uh, it's unlike anything you've seen before. <laughs> um, and the guy wants to test it in a real fight environment, but he doesn't want to break the law. So we decided to sign up for an MMA fight so we can fight no holds barred, you know, as close to that as you can get. All right, fine. So we go to the event. This guy's this guy Lola is legit, a legit fighter. Legit fighter. Um, goes to the event. He comes down, gets in the cage, and then Kung Fu Fighter, the song comes on. <laughs> <laughs> right. And this guy comes down to the ring. He's wearing glass sunglasses, bandana, like dancing his way down the ring. Gets into well, into the cage. Gets into the cage. Um, and we're thinking. We're like a little bit confused watching, but we're thinking it's obviously just it's mental. It's mental warfare. The guy's obviously taking the piss. He's going to get in there and, and, and he's going to be a savage. Maybe. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's going to he's going to take it seriously. Anyway, he gets in, and anybody who knows fighting, um, but it's some variation of this is the stance, right? The athletic stance, one foot forward, hands up. Anyway, this kung fu guy gets in square on, hands here. <laughs> start staring at this guy Lola and again we're thinking oh it's my game so he's going to as soon as the bell goes he's going to switch to stance bell goes did not switch into a stance ends up staying in this position shuffles forward goes left goes right eye contact Lola poor guy is like what the fuck is this <laughs> so eventually he pulls out like a little jab just to have a feel and this kung fu guy gone to try and break his arm obviously didn't work pulled his arm out of the way had a little thing and just well fuck it jab cross bang knocked him out cold <laughs> <laughs> laid him out on the floor um, and yeah not the guy out so bad that he got up I don't know five minutes later and started trying to tackle the referee and stuff it was one of those yeah. comical moments um, we then returned to a later event the same guy was there this time he was taking a different approach fought someone else not from our club went in for like a, a weird takedown got choked unconscious <laughs> And then sometime later, I was training and this guy came into the gym and he looked really familiar. And I was like, oh, I know this guy from somewhere. Anyway, he's training. And you could tell he'd done some sort of training, but his style was a bit weird. And after a little while, I realized that this guy was the Kung Fu guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick's now obviously one of the coaching staff. Yeah. Uh, 15 years on, he's a really good martial artist, very yeah. clever guy. And I, uh, I spoke to him about this and I was like, mate, I don't understand. Like, what the fuck were you thinking? You clearly did a fake martial art. It was bullshit. Like how is such an intelligent guy who's now a very good martial artist, um, you know, purple button jiu-jitsu, but hasn't trained for years, but he got that in 2015, same time as me. And yeah, I was just like, I don't understand. And he just said, mate, the thing is, you, you, like you say, you walk into the wrong place and someone is a good enough salesman and they, they've got their little minions demonstrating, you know, enough techniques and you just buy into it. And again, you go back a few years when there was, you couldn't, re you didn't really know, there was no yeah. way of really finding out. Yeah, there was no, there was, yeah. there was no social been. media like no, that. Then no. to go, well, this is fucking bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, you know, he's, he's been led to believe that this martial art is effective in a real situation. And then the fucking absolute idiot who was teaching it is then put him into a fucking fight to test it. And he's, yeah. he's got knocked out unconscious. There was another lad um, from the same club who, who also fought on the same card and got really beat up it was just horrendous and, and that's the danger of fake martial arts and yeah people need to be really careful but as you say these days there's a lot more information available <laughs> yeah. so you just got to do your due diligence I think yeah and again these, you know as, as being for us as coaches you've got to make sure that's you know prevalent in your, your thoughts isn't it like someone's safety against you know you're teaching people to do some really dangerous things if if again if you if you're trying to if, if i can want to teach you to do something to get some guys untrained yeah you know that's really irresponsible as somebody is, as a coach but back then there was less um awareness yeah less yeah. awareness and less accountability one. i think yeah, as well yeah that's yeah yeah but it's, it's a good point and even think about the flip side of that because you've seen it yeah. a couple of times recently where people have got something in a rear naked choke and fucking held them there for yeah. 15 minutes not not knowing that you you, you know because you're not untrained you don't realize you think shit i don't want to let go and yeah. your panic sets in and you you just hold on to it because you 
you're scared of what yeah. you know scared maybe the wrong word but you know you you, you panic at the repercussions if you let they, it go you, you don't if you're untrained you don't understand you know you might see it but you don't understand what you're actually doing you don't understand it's a blood choke you don't understand yeah. what the actual mechanics it, are behind the choke do you know what i mean you'll see someone on ufc whatever do the choke yeah. and you kind of do a variation of it not knowing really what you, you that you're doing a blood choke, you know that you're pulling your chest in, that you know after six seconds, eight seconds they're going to be out for the count if you got it in mm. tight, and that's the fucking danger. And even trained people, if you're doing it under those sort of cert- situations, aren't you? You know, it's okay being trained in a, in a club or in a, in a gym just to, with people you're training with, yeah. but then you put it under a pressure situation. Do, do, yeah. Is, yeah, you know, what happens to the police all that time? Yeah, know? well, this this goes back to some of the earlier points that we made, like two in particular. One was around that that competing to get a black belt. You should compete because you need to understand yeah. that pressure and how you you need to know how you react under that, or if you're coaching other people, how they might react into that. And the other thing is potentially with like, I guess with child black belts, not saying it's right or wrong again, but there is that risk that a kid gets a black belt at nine, doesn't then train for years, gets to 20, I need a bit of cash, I'm a black belt, I'll teach that. And they go out and start teaching a martial art and it's... And it's a very watered down version of what they've, that what they can remember from a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah.